Good evening, folks. Welcome to Martin Time. Back in 1989, I was 20 years old, and my girlfriend and I decided that we were going to go on an East Coast vacation through Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. While we were traveling around Charlottetown, we came across this outdoor market. In one of the booths, we found a box like this sitting out there. And when I asked the man, I said, what's in those boxes? He said, those, my friend, are Soviet military watches. He said they were authentic. Soviet military watch. And I believe them. It was made by a company called Gruen. It had a Soviet emblem on the front. It had the red star. It said CCP on it. So why would I not believe that it was a Soviet military watch? Well, the first giveaway was that night back in the tent. I wanted to see what the loom was like. Because back then I was all into the loom. Oh, the loom this, the loom that. Let's see the loom. And I put it up against my flashlight, turned off my flashlight inside the tent, and, well, no loom on the hands, but the dots that you see around the numbers, that's loom. So you can tell that you're wearing a watch, you just can't tell the time. So that was a bit of a giveaway. Well, the rest of the vacation was fantastic. I absolutely fell in love with the East Coast. And I actually even went to my girlfriend and said, hey, why don't we just stay out here? We're both 20 years old. We have nothing holding us back. Why don't we just stay in the East Coast and live out here? Um, to be quite honest with you, she actually got a little fair, uh, a little bit afraid because I was the one that drove us out there and she wanted to go home. The meaning of this story is we did end up back in Ontario and continued with her life as usual, um, although separately because we broke up. Um, but over the years, I am now 51, and over the years before I now moved back to the uh, East Coast, which I did uh, 30 years later when I was 50, I moved back to the East Coast. During those 30 years, every time I came across this watch, it reminded me of the beauty of the East Coast. Not that this watch has anything to do with the East Coast, it's just that's where I bought it, and that's what reminded me of the East Coast. Um, as well, I also found out during those years that this is not an authentic military watch. Um, again, my first hint was the uh, mistake with the loom. But what I did find out was that in 1989, Gruen um, got the rights to import these watches to North America, thinking that it would be a hot seller, being times back then were a little different with North America and the Soviet Union. And so when they made these watches, they imported them in through a company called Wanger Limited, which is a Canadian company. Vremax, the official Soviet agency for for uh, Russian watches, uh, went along with it and sure enough, they brought them in. So this, my friend, is mostly a fashion watch to look like and it worked. I mean, they sold thousands of them. Um, so much, in fact, that uh, there's an article in the LA Times many, many, many years ago that um, when these watches were in Europe, uh, they were actually on store shelves next to Rolexes um, because they were such a high seller, they just couldn't hold on to them. Um, I'm not saying this is anything like a Rolex, I'm just saying that, you know, they were trying to sell watches and that's what they do. They put them right up front and they ended up sharing the same space as high-end watches. And this, my friends, are not a high-end watch. Um, like I said before, I mean, it has the, uh, the CCP logo on it, um, or logo, the, uh, Soviet crest, it has the red star. Um, what I've always found the most beautiful part of it is the case back is phenomenal, which was a real giveaway. That's why I totally believed that this was a authentic military watch. But uh, if you can see it, there's the uh, Soviet crest on the back. Absolutely beautiful. And this is, in all intents and purposes, a beautiful watch. I've always loved the simplicity of it. Um, the measurements, it's a, it does have a 20 uh, millimeter lug width. Um, it's a 38 millimeter uh, case diameter, or 46 millimeter from uh, lug to lug across. Um, what powers this little baby is a uh, pull jolt 7 joule movement uh, known as the P2456. Uh, it's a battery watch. Um, during the time actually when I owned the watch I could have swore I took the battery out of it and uh, years later I was looking at uh, dive watches and I thought you know what I'm kind of hankering to have a black watch again and I went to open this watch up and to my absolute horror the battery exploded. I brought this watch to a jeweler. This is going back about maybe 10 years. 
Um, I brought the watch to a jeweler and they sell, told me to throw it out because it was completely shot. The um, corrosion from the battery just was all over the place. But I brought it home. I painstakingly cleaned the whole inside out, um, put a fresh battery in and voila, she uh, works beautifully. Another interesting feature about this watch, uh, which I always thought was kind of cool, if you notice that the crown um, is massive and if you have a good uh, sight line here, you can see it's hinged. And this is a... Uh, a crown protector and you just screw this off there's a little rubber gasket and uh, there's your crown there it's a tiny tiny little thing with such a big uh, lug width on it or lug width I'm sorry a big crown protector on it uh, it did come with it originally a leather band which um, disintegrated uh, leather bands and I don't seem to get along very well I guess because I really wear a watch I don't just buy them for looks but I mean, actually wear them I wore this for about four years straight and uh, the original leather band, which was beautiful, but just just fell apart. Um, the neat thing about the band, and it's unfortunate I don't have it anymore, is uh, the flap, after you do the buckle up, the flap actually tucked into a fold back into the, um, back into the leather. So you didn't actually have a flap uh, going around. Um, so yeah, like I said, that disintegrated. It's got a nice thickness to it. It's uh, beautifully, beautifully simplistic. I love this watch. Um, but anyways, so that's the story behind my behind my little Gruen Soviet watch here. Um, you can still find these on uh, eBay. Uh, this one has the black face uh, or the black dial. You can get them with a white dial as well. They go for about 110 um, to 120 Canadian, so about um, 90 to 100 dollars. Uh, uh, US uh, depending on the condition, of course. Uh, that you can find, like I said, that would be on eBay. Um, if you can get your hands on one, they are really, really nice watch and they are a conversation piece. Uh, you know, whenever I, uh, wear this, uh, watch out, people kind of glance over and now they're becoming a bit more few and far between in the day, like in the early nineties, there was a lot of them, especially in Toronto. Uh, you walk around Toronto, you would see a lot of people wearing them. Um, cause like I said, it was kind of a cool, uh, cool fashion thing at the time. Um, but yeah, it's an, um, it's a nice watch. Um, anyways, if you uh, like this, please uh, like and subscribe. And um, I'm going to be coming up with uh, more stories and more watches. I have lots of them. Um, some watches will be uh, taken apart uh, because I do um, repair and restore vintage watches. Uh, so if I come across something interesting, I will make a story behind it. And um, yeah, if you like this, uh, please subscribe. Thank you.